Good morning. Welcome to another episode of Network Admin Live. This morning I am connecting up a, a, a new switch for our simulation lab. Um, they're moving from one part of the facility to the other and uh, I am on my way to do that. So uh, we'll talk about how we connect up and um, yeah, we'll just go from there. So. Uh, Stick with me and uh, we'll get right to it. So before installing that switch, one of the first things I have to do is um, patch it in. Um, and the way our fiber optic routing works is we come from the, the, the switch location across the hall over to this uh, rack here where we're going to have to cross connect. So. One of the things I'm going to have to do, excuse me, one of the things I'm going to have to do is uh, locate that uh, where the fiber goes. Um, I can pick up my cross connects, that's just great, but if I don't know where the fiber goes, I can't connect it up down in our, uh, our MDF on the distribution switch. So what I do is I uh, connect up just a little flashlight, a very bright little flashlight, and uh, just connect the uh, fibers to it and shine a light through it. And then we will go down to the other end to try to find it. And uh, once we've found it, I will use this same fiber cable to make the cross connect over to, from this panel, which goes down to the MDF, over to this panel, which goes over to the switch across the hall. So uh, I've got the flashlight on there, so let's go down there and see if we can uh, find where it terminates, or where the other end of the fiber is. By the way, um, if you don't have one, one of these little um, fluke flashlights are um, a great little item to pick up. Um, not only is it a very great and bright little flashlight, it, um, it's a great little voltage tester, which is what it is. So if you just get it near a wire, you'll see that light start flashing. It means there's voltage there. Um, put it next to a wire where there is no voltage, you can get nothing. And you can put it on there and it'll, it might think it's going to see something. I got the uh, PoE going across these wires, but it's not alternating current, so you don't get any kind of warning. But you put it across a, a live cable, and you can see that top part's lit up. So, great little device to get if you don't have one. Real cheap and dirty and very handy. Okay, so now after hooking that flashlight up on the other end of the fiber, um, I get to come down here. And uh, and first of all, I apologize for the noise. This is this is a network closet. It's a, a rather large network closet. We got a lot of equipment down here. Um, anyway, so after hooking the flashlight up, I come down here and I have to find the other end of the cable in all of this mess. So it could be over here. It could be over here, or it could be over there somewhere. Um, I didn't subject you to the long hunt, um, so suffice it to say I have uh, tracked it down to uh, this panel here. And um, I looked on the end of the cable, you probably won't be able to see because it's too bright in here. Um, but I can see the flashlight, the two white lights coming out of the uh, two fiber strands there. So. I have located this, so what I need to do now is get a, uh, a longer uh, fiber cable. Um, I think I estimated somewhere around 8 meters or so to go from here, this patch down here, across the ladder, the top there, down, down the back, and then around to our big distribution switch, which is right here and here. So our distribution switch is actually, um, it's two S4s that are bonded together um, to give us a little bit of redundancy. So um, I'm going to use four strands of fiber uh, to create a, what we call a lag, or an aggregate link. So one, two, one pair of fiber will come to this switch, one pair of fiber will go over to that switch. Since they're bonded, they're one logical switch. 
Um, so I can create the lag across these, these two chassis, these two chassis. <laughs> and um, that way if we lose one chassis, we've still got to link up to the other one. So, um, yeah, so that, that's how it'll work. So then I, now that I've uh, found this, um, I need to run the fiber and get it plugged in. And then I can connect up to the switch over there. So uh, I don't know if I'll be able to do it today, but I'm, I'm going to see if I can hunt down some cable and uh, try it. And if not, I'm still going to install the switch, and uh, we'll talk more about that when I get over there. Okay, so here's the switch we're going to be installing. It is an Extreme Networks X460 G2. We got uh, dual power supplies. Um, we're going to run dual fiber cables down to the MDF in our basement um, to our distribution switch. And um, dual power, so we got one, uh, one cable goes to the UPS here and another cable goes into um, facility power on the wall. Um, so that's kind of cool. We can move the switch if we need to. We can walk power cords around without you know, losing anything. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really liking these switches so far. Um, yeah, so uh, we get this guy in. We've already got it patched up on this side and we're gonna go over and uh, patch it over there on the other side. So uh, yeah, hang in there. I have moved to a much quieter area so I can finish up this video um, someplace where you can actually hear me talking. Um, I'm here in the brand new unfinished wing. Well, it's almost finished. Uh, of our hospital. Um, we have a new uh, neonatal intensive care unit here and a new med surge facility upstairs. Um, it's not occupied yet, but uh, all, all the equipment it is, all the equipment is in, all of my, my tasks are done. So it's just a nice quiet place for me right now to just kind of get away and talk. So as you remember, we were um, going to connect up the SimLab switch. So what I've done is I've uh, installed the, uh, the fiber runs. I was able to locate a patch cable. And um, I, I hooked up one leg of the lag. So one of the fiber runs is connected. I'll, I'll still have to put another one in to complete the lag. Um, and the switch is up and it's responsive. Um, and I've already done all this, but I'm gonna walk through what I did um, to add the switch into NetSite and to update the firmware. So I'm kind of old school. I like the old, um, there's, there's two ways to use NetSite. And what NetSite is, is the, um, it's a, a management software for the switches. So you can, you can inventory them. You can see what devices are installed. Um, you can use this to SSH to them. Um, you can run fairly simple, actually fairly complex commands right from this uh, Java interface. Um, so what I do is I go into the switch and I set up the proper SNMP parameters and then I use this software and I tell it to add the switch. And once it's added in here, um, then I can manage it. And uh, I, I don't use this Java interface. They had another Java interface for updating the firmware and backing up the configurations which is another handy thing that NetSite does. Um, but they removed the uh, archiving functionality from the Java version of NetSite. Um, it was actually a different uh, software package, or different part of the software. It was called uh, Archive Manager, and, or I'm sorry, Inventory Manager. Inventory Manager has been discontinued. Um, we still have a NetSite console here, which is what you see. We have a NAC manager for network admission control and the NAC appliance. Um, and we've still got the policy manager Java console. Um, and those are all different uh, Java uh, consoles that you can use to manage your network. Eventually it's gonna be all bundled into their web interface, which inventory manager has already been bundled in. So to, to uh, either back up the configuration or to um, uh, update the firmware, uh, you, you have to use the, uh, the web, web interface. Sorry for all the stuttering, it's end of the day and I am so ready to go home. So anyway, let me, uh, let me show you what's, uh, what's involved here. Set up, um, I add it in. In this case, I added it into this folder. This is it right here. Um, 
You basically say you want to add a device, you put in the IP address right there, and uh, make sure the S SNMP profile is set up the same. You click apply and it pulls it in. And then from here we can do all sorts of things. You can look at the switch, you can get serial numbers and what the firmware it is it's running and uh, all that good stuff. Um, to This is just good for day-to-day -day management. Um, but for um, backing up the configuration files and firmware management, we actually use the web interface, hi there, um, which is in here. I use one pass to cache my password, so it's not cached in Chrome. So what we do is uh, once once we've got it added, we want to go through and find this find the switch we just added. So I'm going to do it by IP address, and it's going to be in this subnet range. And it was, I believe it was 123. Um, or was it? Dang, what was it? Right, let's go find it another way. So I'm going to do it by user device groups. So I've set up a bunch of folders to kind of loosely organize where things are. And you can see why I do that because I forget things. So we've got it in here, 21213. That's what it was. So there it is. Now when we want to, um, the first thing I do is I update the firmware, what you just do in configuration firmware, upgrade firmware, find it, you tell it which firmware image you want to use, you assign it, and then you either schedule the upgrade or just click start and off it goes. I'm not going to upgrade it again. Um, yes. Then after it's upgraded and comes back up, you can go over here to the archives. We've got a daily archive we run. We keep 30 days worth of configs. And so I highlight that. I go over here into config devices. And then I find the one I want, which was uh, this guy. And you just click on the arrow to add it in. And I believe it's already been added in. So there it is. Um, there's no archives to see right now, but because um, they, they run at midnight. But tomorrow morning, There'll, there'll be an archive there and we can see uh, what was backed up. And then if you need to look at an old config, you can go in here and say, okay, uh, so for the 12th, what all was backed up? And you can look at all the switches that were backed up that day. Um, you can also select a switch to view the archive and compare um, archives from like last night to two days ago. You can see what changed. So that's kind of cool. So yeah, very, very uh, handy and powerful software, I love it. So after adding all that, that's pretty much all there was to do. Um, the switch is up, it's running, it's, the firmware is updated, it's uh, in the uh, nightly backup rotation now, so the, con the uh, configuration files will be backed up, and uh, it is ready to have users plugged in. So uh, I hope that was helpful, and if not, I hope it was entertaining. <laughs> so um, that, that's how we do it here. You guys, uh, we'll see you next time.